Hi everyone, now that you know what smouldering MS is, you're probably wondering how or if it affects you. Everyone's MS is different and we're all at different stages. Today I'm chatting with Prof G to find out more. If you're finding these videos informative, please don't forget to subscribe to be notified when each episode goes live. Gavin, thank you so much for speaking to me today about this. I was just wondering, smouldering MS, is it present in early stages of MS? There have been quite a few studies, even in the what I call a pre-symptomatic stage. So these are people with multiple sclerosis who haven't had a clinical attack. We know that you can detect uh, in a very small number of people lesions before they have a clinical attack. These are people who have MRI scans for other reasons. And even in that stage, there's accelerated shrinkage of their brain. They may have these slowly expanding lesions, raised neurofilament levels, which is a protein that's released when you damage nerve fibers. So they've got all this pathology occurring at the beginning of this disease. So yes, I think it's a process that's occurring throughout the course of the disease, even from the, various, the very earlier stages. So do certain factors affect the rate of progression? Yes, genetic factors. There's been a gene that's just been discovered, and if you have that particular variant of the gene, you, you progress much more quickly. We know in, uh, not only in Europe, but in the United States, people from African, Afro-Caribbean or Afro-American ancestry, and also probably Asian as well, seem to progress more quickly. That may be genetic as well. And then obviously people who have poor brain health progress more quickly. And then there's the disease activity early on. So people who have more active disease, so you know many more relapses, bigger lesion load on their brain scans at the beginning of the disease, also progress more quickly. So that, that there's quite a large, um, what I would call basket of factors that are associated with more disease progression. Now, I appreciate though, if we start treating this disease with very effective therapies, not all these factors play out. So these factors were, all these uh, factors were identified in the past before we had very effective disease modifying therapies and now that we've got very effective disease modifying therapies, but if we start them very early, we can help prevent some of these people progressing. I mean, that's the important message. Mine progressed very fast, um, just this, in a short amount of time. It became quite aggressive, quite, you know, tricky to manage. When you say there's a, a gene in terms of like Africans, Asians. Yeah, it's not uh, one gene, unfortunately. It's not one gene. Okay. There's only been one gene that's been discovered that affects progression. Yeah. So in terms of the risk of MS, there's been over 200 variants in the genome. Okay. With progression, okay, there's only been one variant that's been uh, identified that we are aware of. There may be more, it just depends on how many, how, the, how large the studies are to find those. But when it comes to somebody like you from African ancestry, mm. it's not just one gene, it's probably a cluster, of, you know, there's many more. And also people like you haven't been studied in the genetic studies mm. to a high enough level. So we haven't discovered what we, what we need to discover in, in, in people like you. So in the future, we'll hopefully be able to identify these factors. Some of them may be modifiable and they may give us new therapeutic targets. So that's mm. why we need to do research in people from African, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-American, Asian hmm. ancestry to try and find these very rare and common variants in the genome that affect disease course. Okay, that's actually pretty good because you know I'm trying to get people to, <laughs> to you know to do more research because I don't really want to do them. In our centre right now we've got a MRC funded PhD student uh, ben Jacobs is running this Adam study. Yeah, he did. He was at one of my events. Yes. Yeah. And he's really looking for people, you know, from minority groups in this country to come forward and volunteer to participate. It, mm. All it requires is a questionnaire to be filled in and a buckle swab, yeah. a saliva sample, and we do all the DNA, te DNA and genomics mm -hmm. uh, on the saliva. So if you're not of Western European descent, there is a link in the description. Get involved in the research and then we can make a difference. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when each episode goes live.